First of all, I would like to express my happiness and uh, gratitude. I would like to thank Marisendas for its invitation to take part in this important event to share my experience in relation to the access to water and sanitation in Ethiopia. I'm happy really to be here with you in Spain, in particular in Barcelona. Thank you very much. Um, my presentation will focus on uh, the access to water and sanitation in Ethiopia, which is uh, in, 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 the, in reality also the reflection of you know, Africa situation. Before proceeding to the presentation of the water and sanitation situation in Ethiopia, I would like to give you just a brief overview of the uh, Ethiopia, as you know, Ethiopia, it is uh, located in the Horn of Africa, yeah, as you can see in the map. And uh, it is a very sensitive area and also a uh, very uh, significant area for the rest of the world also. Ethiopia is uh, a big country in terms of size, also in terms of population. It uh, covers 1.1 uh, million square kilometer and uh, it has a population of over 90 million people at the moment. And uh, it is also a multi-ethnic country. There are more than 80 ethnic groups and with 200 dialects. And uh, out of this 90 million population, about 40% lives on the poverty line, uh, which is the situation at the moment. As you know, uh, Ethiopia is one of the least developed countries, especially in relation to provision of basic social services such as education, health and water and sanitation. It is one of the lowest among the sub-Saharan and uh, in the rest of the world. Just to give you the other side of Ethiopia also, if Ethiopia is not also, even though it is uh, Economically, one of the poor countries, it has also the other face, it has also other positive, positive aspects. As you know, Ethiopia is one of the oldest nations in the world. It has about more than 3,000 years old history. It is culturally rich and uh, it is also uh, one of, it is also the seat for the African Union, the political capital of Africa. It is in those with uh, rich natural resources, including uh, rich uh, water resources. And then uh, these are the, some of the positive aspects of Ethiopia. Maybe you may have heard that Ethiopia is also the cradle of human being. You know, uh, the human skeleton, it was found in Ethiopia, which is three million years old. And this is because of it is considered you know, the source of the human, human being. Just yes, you know, to show uh, one of the ancient castles, which is found in uh, the northern part of Ethiopia, which is uh, built by Emperor Fasiladas in the 16th century. This is the famous Aksum Obelisk, which was built 3,000 years before. Now it is located in the, same, the, the northern part of Ethiopia. Ethiopia also has its own alphabet, as you can see. It is very unique. It, uh, you know, it is different from what you know in Latin or in English. <coughs> Ethiopia is also homeland for coffee. What the, the, the coffee we drink is, you know, if Ethiopia gave it to the world. And I think it's good to know it. It is found in the place called Kappa in Ethiopia, in the southern part of Ethiopia. I think this is enough just uh, as an introduction. Now I'll proceed to the presentation of the, my main presentation, which is access to water supply in sanitation in Ethiopia. In terms of resources, Ethiopia has a big or abundant water resources in Africa. And it has uh, more than six major rivers and 12 major lakes and uh, an abundant ground in surface water. However, you know, from this resource, only 3% is used, 3%. 
This is a very sad impact. According to the government statistics, at the moment, about 40, one third of the population do not have access to clean water. They don't have clean water. More than half of the population, they don't have access to sanitation facilities. This is how the situation is at the moment. What does this mean? This means about 30 million people do not have access to drinking water. They don't have in their localities. That means they have to travel to long distances in search of water. Especially women and girls, they have to travel long distances to collect water. This has also other implications. This has other physical fatigue and also uh, they are exposed to different damage, physical injuries, and also they couldn't give due attention for other household and economic activities in their uh, uh, household activities. Especially the girls, they are mostly forced to drop out of school because of this. Because first they have to fetch water and they have to travel long distances. Usually, in an, on average, they have to travel three to eight hours, you know. This is their day work, uh, looking a very difficult situation. In relation to sanitation, most of the rural population, they don't have access to toilet facilities. They don't have places to wash their bodies. They don't have a means, you know, to also to dispose the wastes. Therefore, they are forced to, you know, especially in relation to waste, you know, they are forced to the open field, you know, to, for human waste disposal. This is very unhygienic for the human health and also for the environment. Why Ethiopia is in a situation? You know, in the past several years, you know, there was a little done, you know, to change this, this situation. That is one of the factors. The other reason is that there is limited capacity on the part of the government to change the situation, even though it is the priority of the government. It is, you know, it is very obvious that a person or people drinking dirty water, they are exposed to various illnesses. It is very common, you know, you can understand that. Because of this, many children and are dying in particular in Ethiopia because of this lack of access to clean water. The World Health Organization estimates that about 80% of communicable diseases are related to waterborne diseases. That means People, those people who do not have access to clean water, they are exposed to uh, communicable diseases. The same is true about Ethiopia. Just to explain what I have said in terms of picture, this is a group of women fetching water from long distances, you can't in the picture. This is the daily routine of most Ethiopian women and girls in Ethiopia. They have to travel day and night to collect water. Not only they have to travel long distances, but also they have to sometimes they have to climb mountains. They have to go down to the gorges. They may fall down. They may injure themselves. It is very difficult. You can't see a boy drinking dirty water because he has no option. He has to drink this. In the worst scenario, you know, People have, the women also have to collect this flood water to drink. In terms of sanitation, it is very clear to you that, you know, people who have no toilet facilities, it is really reducing a human dignity, it reduces the dignity of the person to use the open field, to use the bush. Therefore, how this is how the situation is. Therefore, what can we do about to, to change the situation? This is the question. In order to change this, the question, first, you know, we have to see our challenges. One of the challenges is that although the government has given due attention for the problem of lack of access to water and sanitation, it has 
capacity limitation in terms of finance, in terms of manpower, in terms of institutional capacity. There is also lack of coordination. There is low level of awareness on the part of the community about the use or the importance of sanitation, importance of personal hygiene, importance of environmental sanitation because of lack of education. Therefore, we can see that how the problems are interrelated and in affecting the population of the poor Ethiopian people. Also, this is the reality of the rest of Africa. Not only challenges, but also we have also opportunities to change the situation. One of the good opportunities is that the government has put it in the top agenda at the moment. Water and access to water and sanitation is one of the priority agenda of the government. This is a good opportunity. There is also a good policy, conducive policy to be involved with, not only for the government organization, but also for other NGOs to be involved with. In the policy document, water, the access to water is stated as the right of the people. This is also one good opportunity. There are also committed NGOs working in the sector, including the Catholic Church. We have been working in the past years with many uh, partners in Europe, in particular with the Spanish NGOs, Manu Sinidas and others. This is also a good opportunity for us to change the situation in Ethiopia. Therefore, from this, what can we say? Is this a hopeless situation, or uh, do we have a hope to change the situation? I think the answer is clear. We can change the situation because the water is there. The water is there to change, to, to, uh, to make, to create access to the people. We need one good resource is the water. We have it. And the other is, you know, the good committed NGOs and organizations, the government, that is also a good opportunity. Therefore, in general, we can say, although the situation is very uh, difficult, we can change the situation. In conclusion, that I would say that we have a problem, but we can change that, that problem with the involvement of and uh, NGOs with the support of our partner organization like Manu Civitas and the Spanish people, we can change the situation. And uh, in general, I would say that I take this opportunity to express my gratitude for Manu Civitas for working with us to improve the life of the people of Ethiopia, for their solidarity, also in general, also for the Spanish people. And uh, with this, I conclude. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.